Welcome to You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker, a podcast to encourage and equip moms along their parenting journey. Join Sarah each week as she interviews dads and moms like you and discusses the joys, challenges, and rewards of raising kids. Hi, and welcome to this week's You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamaker, and I am so glad you joined me. Today I have with me Rabbi Slatkin and his wife, Rivka, and we're going to talk about why a good marriage is essential for parenting. Now, um, let me tell you a little bit about the Slatkins. They are, um, the rabbi is a licensed clinical professional counselor, and they do a lot of um, marriage counseling, and uh, he's the founder of the Marriage Restoration Project. So, and they also have five children. So we're going to have, I think, a lot of fun talking about why marriage is essential to good parenting. So thank you both for joining me tonight. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Sarah. So as we were talking a little bit before we got got started uh, recording, so many times as parents, we focus on all the things we need to do as parents, especially when the, you know, the baby's little, we have to, you know, keep him or her alive <laughs> because they can't do anything <laughs> themselves. And, and then we we're really focused on them because they're new in our house. And and sometimes um, that's when, you know, our focus on our marriages, you know, can start to slide. And then as you add in more children and um, all the schooling and activities and things like that, you know, it's, I think marriages can really get lost, get lost in parenting. Do you, have you find that to be true? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just can be so busy that we, by the time the day's over, we're so exhausted, we don't even have. You know, parents don't even have time for each other. They don't make time for each other. Right. And I think that that is the key, right? I mean, we have to, you know, it needs to be a priority in our life. Um, and most of the time we forget why that's important. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's really hard, especially for moms, because, you know, it's hard to put our own needs first. And, you know, the kids are kind of like the squeaky wheel. So they get the grease and, mm. It's it's easy to really neglect ourselves and our adult, you know, most important relationship uh, with each other. Um, and at the same time, if we do um, not forget about that most important relationship, then so many of the smaller, you know, stressful symptoms of raising kids will go away because if you deal with the foundation and the foundation is solid, all the other little things become less pronounced. And I love that you... you um you know, said that the marriage is the foundation. I mean, because that's really where this all started. I mean, most of us get married and then we have children and, and we kind of forget. It's like the children come, we're like, oh yeah, we were married (laughs) kind of thing. (laughs) And that's, I mean, it's not, it's not healthy for our kids though, as well. Am I right? I mean, I, I, kids need to know that their parents, um, you know, have a good marriage. Yeah. It's, it's really important for Many different reasons, but just in general, kids can pick up on, on, they have really good antennas. So they know if things aren't really, uh, so stable in the relationship or something doesn't feel, the parents don't feel connected. They don't know how to articulate that, but you can even tell in their behavior that kids really thrive on structure and stability. And if you don't have that as a couple, the kids will pick up on it and then they'll make your life more, more difficult. <clears throat> Right. And I think also, too, that when when the kids can see that we have a good marriage, they it also takes a pressure off of them. Right. They can just be kids because they're not we're not looking to them to fulfill anything that we would look to our spouse to fulfill. Mm, that's, yeah, a really that's a really good point. point. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. it's it's funny. Are my 16 year old? She knows when we're getting a little bit low on, you know, time together and she'll say, you guys need to go out. Like, <laughs> go out. <laughs> and she wants us to, because, you know, she knows we'll come back in such a better mood if we've had time together. Yeah. It's funny. Don't. She sounds like my 16 year old <laughs> who sometimes looks at us and say, you guys need to go out. And yeah. sometimes I think it's half what you're saying and half that they just want the house to themselves for a little yeah, while. That, yeah. <laughs> but that's a healthy thing. I mean, I think they're like not go out separate, but you know, you know, you haven't been out on a date lately. You guys need to need to go out. Um, and I think that, um, you know, that's so important. I mean, we kept, the neighborhood teenage girls 
practically in business when our kids were younger and needed babysitters because yeah. we knew how important it was to do that. And you're right. We feel so much better when we've had a night away from the kids. Not that we don't love our children, but with our spouse, because it just really recharges us, I think, to be better parents, too. Definitely. Definitely. So can you talk, I mean, why is this so hard? I mean, you talk, you touched a little bit on this, uh, Rivka, with why it's so hard for moms to let go. But why in general is, is it so hard for us today to kind of step away enough to have that focus on our marriage? I, I think that marriages are in self, I mean, some people have it easier than others. But I think a lot of people are struggling in, in their marriages that, you know, we find that couples start off in the romantic stage and we practice something called a model therapy. So we describe the three stages of a relationship that a marriage starts off in the romantic stage and then it hits what we call the power struggle. And sometimes when we have kids, we kind of distract ourselves from that. So it's an e- easy way to, you know, to have a more enjoyable life and not have to deal with the difficulties with our spouse. So I think for a lot of us, it's just it's hard to be in a relationship and it takes commitment and it takes understanding and it's just easier to distract ourselves with the kids and, and be busy so that we don't even have time for each other. Right. And you know, um, my husband and I, you know, we have, we have a 16 year old and then, you know, several kids I and mean, our youngest is 11 and I'm thinking, okay, how many more years until they're out of the house? Not that I'm eager, really eager for them to go, but I don't want to look at my husband when my last child goes off to college and go, who are you? (laughs) You know, I want to look at him and go, okay, now what are we going to do? (laughs) What kind of fun things are we going to do in a positive way? But I think so many parents, they get to that stage and they, they, they don't know what to do. They don't know the person they're married to anymore. Yeah, it's really hard. And and sometimes people don't even know who they themselves are. Mm -hmm. The kids, you know, grow up because we've just, felt, you know, we've just spent so many years on their every possible need that they have. And I think it's, it's important to, to nurture ourselves throughout the parenting process. So we don't forget who we are and then we can be a better partner as well. So what are some, um, you know, for our listeners who may be going, yeah, I hear myself in this, what are some, you know, kind of easy things for them to do to kind of get on that path to restoring um, you know, their marriage with even with young kids in the home. So part of it is, is kind of like you and your, your husband did, you know, making that time to go away, having a standing babysitter, having a date night. I mean, it sounds like a little simple things, but, you know, because if, if you really want anything to happen, you have to schedule it in. Mm-hmm. So making sure it's a priority. So having that time to have fun together, having time to be able to go away. Um, and then also learning their you know, other incorporating other rituals into your relationship where you can, you know, one thing that we teach couples is an appreciation uh, dialogue process. So you're able to spend five minutes each day just looking to each other's eyes and sharing one thing they appreciate about each other and why they appreciate it. And that it just helps them stay connected and, and have those positive moments. Um, so, you know, those are things that every couple can do. Couples that are struggling, uh, it, you know, we find it's beneficial to get help to right. be able to to get a little bit more clarity on these on the issues that are happening and learn how to be able to more effectively communicate with each other and that will not only help the couple as a as a married unit but will also help them be better in every relationship including with their kids right right and i um and when you were talking about, you know, some couples or some parents listening to this may go, well, I can't find five minutes a day <laughs> to look in, you know, my spouse's eyes and say what I appreciate. And um, we've always been a big advocate of putting our kids to bed, you know, fairly early um, so that we'd have that time, um, even though they're not necessarily tired, uh, because I think we just tend to ha- keep our kids around us way too long, <laughs> you know, way too long. And so, especially when they're little, we're just, everyone's just tired, tired and cranky. Right. And so, you know, who has the energy for that, that we can, there are other things that we can do. Um, you know, there were, there were small, you know, several months from the, in each of our children's lives when they were little that they never saw my husband at night because I put them to bed at six o'clock cause they had dropped, you know, certain naps and stuff. Mm. And I remember my, some of my friends were like, wow, that's really, your husband doesn't see him. I said, yeah, it's temporary and everyone's better. And, you know, it also helped us to have that little connection time before we fall asleep at like, you know, eight o'clock because <laughs> we're so tired with, uh, with having a, you know, baby in the house or whatever. Um, 
But yeah, some- we're, we're big fans of early bedtime. I mean, we absolutely want our kids in their rooms <laughs> and when, you know, when it's reasonable because we need that adult just time to talk and have a normal conversation without lots of, you know, little voices all around grabbing for our time and attention. And it does get challenging as, as the kids get older and you realize like they don't want to go to bed at six o'clock. Six right. six. <laughs> I know, it's, darn it. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, you know, that, that just makes it even more important to schedule time to be able to get out of the house, right? You know, have a babysitter so that you can really get away and spend some time together. Yeah, we also but- keep things really simple. Like we don't have the kids signed up for lots and lots of extracurricular things because then I will be more stressed out running carpools, you know, to and from a million different activities. So we really just, you know, everyone comes home from school and we just chill at home and sit on the couch and read. And so I just find simplicity is key because it really is hard raising kids these days. There's just so many challenges and keeping things simple and just getting back to basics. Um, you know, we don't live in villages anymore where people all around us can help raise the kids. And I think that's hard on, on, you know, our, all, all of our little families here and there. So I try to keep things as simple as possible as well. Oh, I love that because we're the same way. <laughs> you, yeah. know, you know, my kids do hardly anything and sometimes they've wanted to do things. But again, I'm like, okay, if I do that, I'm going to be really tired and, cr- and cranky and nobody wants to be around me when I'm like that. Not even myself. Right. So, yeah. um, and it just, I'm like, I'm sorry, it's just not going to work with our family schedule. Um, and I think it's important to keep that in mind so that we have the energy for, you know, the one who started this all, our spouse, right? <laughs> you know, you're in this with, with, with this person for a reason, um, raising these kids together. Uh, and, you know, I think it's important to kind of think about those things. So often we just, we just kind of go, oh yeah, you want to, you want to do theater? Sure. Great. And then before you know it, one kid's in theater, one kid's in sport, and then you're driving, you know, three times to school, to different schools every day, and you're exhausted. The kids are tired. Everyone's exhausted. So simplicity, I think, is great. And it also, I think, um, helps kids realize that family is important. Right. You know, because that can kind of get lost, I think, in the, um, you know, in our busyness. We can lose sight of the fact that, you know, family is important um, and our marriage is important, the center of that as well. Definitely. I think our kids know by now that we are each other's best friends. Um, I'm not sure how they know that exactly. Maybe just Mm -hmm. through modeling it. Like we haven't explicitly said that, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but they know um, just from looking at us and and they just know that we are. So, you know, it's we're not like running out with friends all the time and, you know, distracting ourselves from when we have the chance to be with, you know, without our kids, we're spending, prefer to spend time with each other. Right. So the, yeah. The kids have picked up on that and, mm-hmm. and they know that we're a unified front, which is super important because kids, you know, they want to sometimes get an answer from mommy and then mm-hmm. get an answer from daddy. And yeah. Because they want a certain answer. <laughs> right. right. And, and, play, off, play the parents off each other. Yeah. You know. Right. So if the kids can know that you're a united front and and you're on the same page, some of that, those little, um, I don't know what the word is, those little tricks. (laughs) Right. Don't minimize. Yeah. And I think that's also another, another something I think is important is when we, um, is how we talk about our spouse and to our kids. Mm. Um, You know, especially if we, you know, sometimes there's times when I don't agree with what my husband's done. But we we have that unified front, so I'm going to support him mm-hmm. in that. And I need to do that with not just, um, you know, not contradicting him, but also in the way that I talk about the decision because my kids may come to me and complain, well, Dad didn't let me do this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, yeah, and your father's right. You know, it's, you know that was his decision to make, and I'm supporting him with that um, because sometimes I might, I might not agree with that decision, and I've had to kind of catch myself mentally and go, oh, wait, no, I need to support it because, you know, usually they're not, you know, like totally egregious, and I really need to talk to him privately about that, but most of the time it's just a difference of opinion on how something should have been handled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
that's a good point. Just making sure the way you speak about your spouse is respectful and in front of the kids. Right, and not undermining the other. For yeah. sure. Yeah, because when we part of our, you know, part of our, um, why a good marriage is essential for parenting is that we want to model what a good marriage looks like for our kids. So mm-hmm. when they get to that point to, um, think about, you know, what they want in a spouse, I want them to think, oh yeah, I want a marriage like my parents had. Yeah. And that's one of the most important things you can do to get, to show them that healthy relationship, because there's so many relationships today that, that are struggling and are not healthy. And, People just kind of pass on their dysfunctions from one generation to the other. I mean, I see a lot of people who are coming for help, and many of them come from a broken home. And, it's, and you know, it's so painful to see what they had to grow up with, and they see how they're kind of repeating it in their own relationship. So the more that you can work on it and model for your kids, it's a, it's a, the most amazing gift that they can, you can possibly give as a parent. And it also, um, I think, can be very helpful, um, too, because, I mean, not just model the good things, but also, you know, how do we resolve conflict? How do we, you know, work when we don't maybe don't see eye to eye on it? Um, Because these are, you know, it's not just for marriage. These are good life skills as well. But if they never really see those modeled, they never really, you know, see how grownups can fight and make up and have a stronger relationship on the other side, then it, it does, it get, does kind of hamper them in their, um, in their relationships. Yeah. They, they don't really see, they don't, they don't really know what reality is like and they don't have the skills or the, even the frame of reference to see that there can be a resolution. Right. Um, so what are, what are some of the fun things that, that you like to do as a couple, um, that you don't do with your kids? Um, I'll share one real quick before you, before you, before you two share, um, we used to get, um, you know, buy like really good ice cream and eat it when the kids were in bed. <laughs> and then sometimes they would find the bowl in the sink. They're like, yeah. you had ice cream? We're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we've done that a few times. We, we do that a lot. We buy ourselves treats and have it after they go to bed. Um, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> it is. You know, little, it's the little things in life like that, you know, like a chocolate bar that we're sharing, just the two of us, um, you know. There's so many things. I mean, some some cost money, some don't. We're kind of we like doing um we like doing relaxing things together. It's funny. Like last week, we knew we needed a date, and I happened to drive by this Chinese foot massage place. So we went, and we both got a foot massage, <laughs> and we enjoyed that. That was that was fun. I mean, eating is always, going out to eat. We always like to do um, <laughs> when we can. Um, but there's, you know, little homey things we can do, too, that don't cost a lot of money. Even just, you know, taking a walk around the block when the kids are asleep or, um, you know, just like around the corner, or sitting outside. What else do you like to do? I know you like to walk. So yeah, I like to walk. Um, it's yeah, a little hot in the summer. It's hot in the summer. <laughs> you know, cutting little trees or um, we do love going away when we get the opportunity. That's like you know, a couple times a year, maybe for a night. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, and I think those are all, I mean, just to kind of, um, we, uh, we need to, um, unfortunately we need to wrap up our show today, but I think that those are some of the ways that, um, you know, you kind of think outside the box. I mean, you know, think about what you like to do when you were dating, you know, try to work on some of those. And again, those things don't have to cost money. And for those of you who are like, look, I don't have any relatives nearby. I don't know any teenagers. I bet you know other couples with young children who would love to swap babysitting with you. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, there are ways to kind of find babysitters that, and that don't break the bank, that you can do these things. And, um, you know, when my husband and I were, um, were first married, we got season tickets to a local theater company. They were very inexpensive. And we continued that when our kids were little because it gave us like four date nights a year. (laughs) Because you're right, getting those things on the calendar was like essential. Mm -hmm. So we were like, okay, we have at least four dates a year (laughs) that we're going to be out for the evening. And that just helped us to get comfortable with babysitters to kind of get out there. And um, sometimes you just need to do little things like that. Um, You know, ask for them for, you know birthday anniversary gifts and things like that you can um you know you you can do those types of things experiences where you can 
get it on the calendar and get up. Well, is there, before we close today, is there anything else about why marriage is essential for parenting um, that we didn't cover? Um, just one last thing. I think it helps that the more that you can be a good spouse and, and accept and be able to communicate effectively and accept your spouse um, the, and be less triggered by your spouse, the better parent you can be as well because the same skills that apply to a relation to a marriage apply to a parent child relationship as well. So um, that's just another benefit. Yes. Yeah, no, that's a really good point that um, we're not just modeling, but we all are using those skills in our parenting um, to keep that relationship well with our kids too. So, um, well, thank you both for being with me uh, today. You've been listening to You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamaker, and I've been talking to Rabbi and Rivka Slatkin. Uh, they um, are, well, he is a marriage uh, counselor and he has the Marriage Restoration Project and you can find out more about them in their bio link to this podcast. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast of You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker. Sign up to receive notification of new podcasts and listen to previous editions at sarahhamaker.com. Until next time. Remember, parenting might be hard sometimes, but don't worry, you've got this.